time and time again, each of those jurors understood the facts that were presented and the aggravators, yet somehow one of them thought that the mitigators that were presented by the defense, and let me, let me pause for just a moment and reiterate what's been said before. This is a defense team that we understand as families, they have a job to do. But the lack of empathy and humanity shown to our families by this defense team, it's indefensible. And to argue that life in, life in prison without possibility of parole was somehow better because he'd get his inside, I couldn't believe my ears. I can't even imagine a defense attorney making that argument. That shows you how low they will go. And of course, in, conclusion, in their concluding arguments, they wandered into the absolute absurd to try to find some rationale to defend. And, and it worked. It worked with one of the jurors. And we're, we're very disappointed. Um, we came here seeking justice. We were hoping for justice. And unfortunately, we didn't get it today. Let me make a point about the one. I don't want to focus so much just on this one juror. Had one person done their job at the school district, had one person done their job at BSO, I might not be standing here today. We might not even have needed to have this trial because we wouldn't be here today. And it's unfortunate that we have, that we have to be here. Um, this is where we are. Yeah. Um, I echo all the same thoughts that, that have been said. Um, for me, I, I want the, the most important thing is for the world to know that um, my sister, Elena, um, and the 16 others that were killed, they, uh, they were beautiful people. And it, it leaves me with anger, sadness, and, and, and emptiness to know that, you know, uh, none of us will ever get to see them here again, uh, and that they were cut short. Um, and the fact that they allowed this, this murderer to get off with life in prison seems unjust to us. Um, and to the real victims in this situation. So, yes. When you're sitting there and it's stuck in that, that they're not voting for the death penalty, when you realize that, what do you think? I don't know how you can look at all the aggravators and vote yes on every single one of them, that the state did its job. It proved beyond a reasonable doubt that those aggravators were, in fact, aggravators. It was unanimous, all of them. Seven for three of the victims, the, the, uh, the teachers and staff, and five for each of the children that were murdered in school. And come to the conclusion that that doesn't, that somehow, you know, it's just one juror thought one or more of the mitigators was enough to override that. Look, this is how our system works. I get it. I understand. We knew going in that it needed to be a unanimous verdict with the jury. Um, I just thought the facts were so overwhelming. The, the viciousness of what was done at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, I don't know how you can walk away. They saw pictures and videos that I haven't seen. We heard testimony from the doctors and the medical examiners about the absolute cruelty and indifference to the victims that the killer showed. I don't know how you can walk, I don't know how you can see that as a juror and walk away and walk away feeling good about the job, that job that one juror did today. Brian, I've been working a lot outside of the courtroom since all this happened. Um, in this near mind, was today going to be a moment of moving forward? Do you feel like you got that or do you feel like this is just another day in an ongoing process? Um, Today, I was hoping we'd close a chapter. We, we're going to close a chapter either way, right? 
Um, nothing will bring Elena back to us. Um, I've come to that realization now over four and a half years later. She's not coming back. Um, my ability to explain it to my son, her, her brothers and her sister, my wife, still don't have the words to, to explain what happened or why it happened. As much as I've learned about what happened and as much as I've seen evidence presented to the commission and otherwise, I still don't have an explanation for them that's good enough. She's not coming back. I knew that. But I had hoped that for all of the families, we would see some modicum of justice today. And we'll have to be satisfied with what, uh, what came out of the proceedings today. You were on the commission, you and Max probably know more about this than the other parents, just because of what you did. Do you think that Cruz should have been institutionalized or locked up long before February 14th, 2018? Uh, it's clear that mistakes were made um, and that there were warning signs prior to him acquiring a firearm and putting his plan into place. I mean, he, we heard testimony in the trial here. He's been a problem since kindergarten. He attacked other students in kindergarten. So the school district was certainly aware of it. His mother was aware of it. Um, the community in general, I think, was was aware of uh, what the possible threat, uh, but action wasn't taken. So I, the lesson coming from from this is that there are warning signs; they are real. We've learned, I've learned subsequent to this, that over 90% of these school attacks, there are warning signs exhibited prior to the attack, and if we'll take them seriously, which was not done in this case. They were not followed, followed up on, we can prevent these tragedies from happening.